Welcome to episode number 15 of the Batman on Film Social. No, this is not the social hour. This is the satellite show. My bad. I'm sorry, Freak and Chris. <laughs> it doesn't really matter, does it? I am Bill Raymond, the founder of Batman on Film. This is the satellite show where we talk about anything we want to talk about other than Batman. And this is going to be part two of our discussion of Elvis. And this one is literally Elvis the movie because we've all seen it. Um, part one, we talked about our Elvis fandom and Elvis's music and his legacy. And this one is about Baz Luhrmann's biopic. God, it's more than a biopic. It's just, it's an event. It's just, it is. We're going to get into it. So, and back with me uh, are my two guests to talk about uh, this film and fellow Batman, fellow Batman fans. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and fellow Elvis fans as well. So we're going to, but we're going to nerd out over, over Elvis and Elvis was, and I love it. The fact that the movie showed this, that he is an OG fanboy comic book reader and oh, loved, yeah. loved Captain Marvel Jr. So, so with me is Freak Base. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing wonderful. Buzzing off last night's movie. And uh, the great Chris Roach. Chris, how are you, sir? I'm great. Still riding high after seeing this last night. I'm gonna no disrespect to my to Elvis. I want to take off my Elvis glasses, put on my glasses, so I can actually see the computer screen. So, hmm. all right, I saw the film last week at a uh, at the press screening here in Dallas, and uh, so I've already written my review, and I did a uh, straight out of the theater uh, reaction. So, a uh, reaction video. So I want to give you all a chance because you're basically just a few hours removed from seeing it for the first time. So Freak, start us out with your straight out of the theater reaction to Elvis. Yeah, you know, I, I watched yours, Bill, and when you did it last week, and I understand why you had the, kept the glasses on. Yeah, um, I, was, uh, uh, I was moved quite a bit yeah, by that yeah point. i mean i just i literally went and just sat in my car for a good 10 minutes and just i mean almost started sobbing i mean it was yeah. it was so the way they did the you know i know we're not going into spoilers yet but the way that they did that ending of the movie yeah the way it wrapped up and that that that, that slick thing they did which we'll talk about hopefully mm -hmm. eventually mm -hmm. um was just uh, it just got to me so much so i just sat there for about 10 minutes Drove home, put on Spotify, put my earphones on, and listened to In the Ghetto on infinite repeat. Um, it was uh, spectacular. I'll be honest with you. At first, about the first 10 minutes, it was kind of jarring. It took. I was like a mm -hmm. little worried about 10 minutes in, to be honest with you, because it was so... Baz Learman stylized and and the way it starts off was different than I thought it was going to be in terms of chronologically the way mm -hmm. that they did that and it was kind of and and the song which um are we allowed to talk any you you want me to wait before we talk about anything specific about the movie no go um, I mean let's uh <clears throat> yep if it's part of your your little uh reaction go ahead and then let me just say for everybody listening we are going to do spoilers we're recording this on the 22nd of June uh, this is the night after all the the uh, the fan screenings that happened on the 21st. The movie comes out on well, the 24th, but they start screening on Thursday afternoon. Yeah. There's like four o'clock screening. So, so if you haven't seen Elvis yet, go back and watch our first video. See Elvis and then come back and watch this because we're going to talk right. about spoilers. We have to. And yes, I know it's a it's the life of Elvis. We know the life of Elvis, but there there are some things in the film that you don't want to know. If you haven't seen, I promise. Correct. All right, go ahead, sir. Yeah, yeah. And I won't get too spoiler yet, but I just will say the beginning, you know, uh, it starts off with him as the older Elvis. Like you think it's going to, you know, I thought it was just going to be either when he's a kid or at least the 50s Elvis. Mm -hmm. So, and um, and the first song you see is American Trilogy too, which was, we talked about in the last show, how, mm -hmm. you know, how that song affects me so much. And it was kind of like, whoa i'm not right you know it just it just was jar it was jarring to me at first um but 10 15 minutes in once you're on that journey it's there's no looking back and it it's it's i mean, it almost felt like a could have been a netflix a great netflix series mm -hmm. 
on screen in terms of, you know, Elvis was almost like three different people in terms of his different, you know, you mm-hmm. had the 50s Elvis, the 60s Elvis, and the 70s. It was like three different, like, personalities, which is why Austin Butler's so great. But, um, and uh, it's almost like th- that first 15 minutes felt like, you know, that first episode when you watch a first Netflix. Sure. Like, oh, here's the first one, and then we're going to go into it. But once you're into it, it's incredible. Like I said, it, it was so it was so inspirational, heartbreaking, j- j- epic. I mean, all the words that you would you that I could just say just to to lavish praise on it. So that's my that's my initial thought, I guess. Chris, all right, you just walked out of, out of the screening. You're on camera. Yeah, still What's processing to be honest. Yeah. Uh, yeah. First off, for anybody that's got any reservation whatsoever about Austin Butler being Elvis in this movie, put that to bed. Yeah. Give that guy an Oscar right now because he's <laughs> yes. like from scene one, I believed every bit of it. You know, it's like I was watching an Elvis documentary. Um, you learn a lot about Elvis with this film that even as a fan, you might not have realized before. You know, there's a lot of um, h- how we talked about in previous films and TV uh, movies and whatnot that they glossed over the, the darker parts of Elvis's life and the struggles and, and some of the, you know, uh, how he was taking advantage of all that kind of stuff. They do not gloss over any of that with this film. It's very vulnerable. It's very honest. And it, and it's, it's a love letter to Elvis, but it's, it's a little bit more real than, than anything you've seen before. And I, and I really, that's what I was hoping I would get out of this. So, but starting off walking in from, from the title credit rolling, I just had a huge grin on my face for, the better part of you know two and a half hours and especially the first half of the movie is very hopeful and obviously um there's twists and turns with that and and at the back half is not so you know and that's just the life that he led uh, without going into spoilers about how they how they portray that and put that into the film i just think it was really well done take aside you know uh, aside from the fact that this was an elvis film and we're fans as a piece of cinema, this is brilliant. Baz Luhrmann is on his A game. It's a great story. It's a great cast. It's a great script. It's shot really well. It looks different and unique. It has an identity. It has something to say. And even if you're not an Elvis fan, and you know, uh, like you said, he's been known as a, a Halloween character um, almost with, mm-hmm. with this. You know, the last few generations. Um, He's not that anymore if you watch this film. It is a very interesting character, whether you're a fan or not. And I think the story stands by itself on its own. So to, to, to have that quality of a film around somebody that was uh, such an inspiration to me as a kid, musically and, and, and whatnot, it was just, it was epic. It was, it was, that's the film I've been wanting to see for 30 years. I'm with you. Your, your mic is just kicked in with that feedback again yeah it was it's doing what it did last time okay can we pull a plug pull is it let me switch to uh boomy is that any better yep right away yeah yep let me sorry lads no problem we did a little mic check with my friend alex this morning and it it was working great I'm not sure why it's let me down now. Okay. Let me see if I can get my audio back on you guys. Still working? Yeah. Sounds All right. Good. Well, great. did you catch my ramble or was that distorted? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's got it. Right, I, can, we'll go I, can, I can probably put it through a little, uh, get that feedback out. So we're good. All right. All right. We'll start back. I'll cut that, that, this part out. All right. Five, four, three. All right. So, um, Let's start breaking down the film. So this point on, we're full spoilers. Y'all, if y'all are listening, again, there's your spoiler warning. Um, let's start off. I want to save Austin Butler for a little t- toward the end. Uh, sure. Because of, I could get into it right now. So not, we're just going to save it for the end. But uh, the two main characters, of course, are Colonel Parker, played by Tom Hanks, and then Elvis, played by Austin Butler. And the film is told through the... Well, the colonel narrates it, and it's kind of through his point of view. And when I read that originally, I was kind of worried about it, it was going to be more of a, of a Colonel Parker film. Yeah, but it's not the case. It, it um, you still it's still Elvis's story, and it's still yeah. Elvis's story. Uh, and Elvis, I mean, what happened with Elvis? Not through the, the lens of Parker. 
even though Parker narrates it. So what do you, uh, what did y'all think about uh, Tom Hanks portrayal of uh, Colonel Parker? Chris, go ahead. I mean, Tom Hanks is brilliant in just about everything. Let's be honest. You know, mm-hmm. so I was expecting that out of him, but yeah, I mean, I'm surprised with how dark they went with that character. And uh, we all know that, uh, you know, that, that was the reality, mm-hmm. how manipulative he was. And uh, he, he was a glorified con man, you know, <laughs> yes. uh, basically. But he was also brilliant. And who knows, uh, would Elvis have been Elvis? Would it probably not mm-hmm. without him, you know? So I think he nails that kind of creepy showman, circus guy that's just uh, never been... He's always been glossed over and it made to be more likable in previous incarnations. And, uh, you know, the prosthetics they used, I think he looks, that adds to that. He just mm-hmm. looks a little unnerving and, and untrustworthy, and, you know, just always greasy and kind of, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, the whole cast was phenomenal. I, got, I, I was thinking, is there anybody that was the weak link in this film? And I can't think of anybody. I, I can't. And Oh, it's his mom, I, Priscilla. I mean, they, yeah. you know. Um, uh, what's his name? Is it Darcy uh, Montgomery, the guy from Stranger mm-hmm, Things? Mm-hmm. As uh, he was my un- in my review, uh, he was my unsung hero. Of, uh, you know, I talked about how great the uh, supporting cast was, and I even have a, a segment to talk about them. But just want to mention, I, 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 I him as Steve Bender was fantastic. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I they really played into with with Parker uh, how he he used Elvis's fear of returning to poverty. Elvis never lost that fear of losing everything and going back to being poor again. And Parker always, he played him with it. And, and, yeah. and, and you know. Even how, um, you know, he knew Elvis was all about family. So mm-hmm. he put his dad in charge mm-hmm. of the money when his dad probably didn't know what he was doing with that money. You mm-hmm. know, he wasn't, uh, that wasn't by trade what he did. So then I feel like, was that just somebody else he could manipulate within that family mm-hmm. to keep them under his thumb? You know, it's just, it's kind of frightening to watch how that played out. Yes. Especially not to go into spoilers, but later in the movie, once uh, Elvis realized this was going on uh-huh. and he still found ways to kind of keep him tethered. Yep. You know, I agree. hundred and it's, it was, it's really accurate but, as yeah. far as the way, um, you know, from reading um, the, to me, the, the two definitive biographies of Elvis, they're both by Peter Goralnik and it's the two volume uh, last train to Memphis and then careless love. And it gets into that relationship between the two. And I'm sure Baz really leaned heavily into the, cause he did so much research. Like he did like, Two two years plus of research before he wrote the mm-hmm. screenplay and and what and whatnot. So, um, yeah, I'm glad that they nailed Tom Parker, who yeah. wasn't really Tom Parker, which is another you know just no, crazy that's the whole thing, thing yeah, about him. You know, uh, and why is Elvis been... couldn't tour overseas because he couldn't he couldn't go with him because he would not be allowed back in the country. It's just it's crazy. Yeah. And how he got away with that at such a high level is unreal. Yeah. Has there ever been a film where Tom, Tom Hanks was playing a character that was this unlikable? Because I've, I've thought about it. He's always been the star of the movie, or at least is a sporting I, role. He's lovable. This yes. is like... He's all, he's a great actor. For, if you agree with me, he's a great actor. Of course, Tom Hanks is a great actor. But he's always, he's a little bit of like, he's kind of always Tom Hanks and right. his roles. Um, you know, he's not a Christian Bale that just, you know, completely uh, uh, disappears yeah. into, you know, uh, right. He's like a J- Jimmy Stewart type. Yeah, you know, exactly. Day, Jimmy Stewart. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And this one, I didn't see, I didn't see Tom Hanks. I saw the no. Colonel, you know, and I thought it was, uh, I, I thought he was great for it because he, that was, they, yeah. I was going to say he let the, with him being in there, there was always this t- constant tension through the whole movie like you could never fully relax you almost felt like elvis you could never fully relax especially when he was on screen but you felt that tension 
in the you know even when Elvis is like killing this performance and we can talk about the different performances that mm -hmm. happen but there was always that him there and there was that tension when he and you felt that tension Elvis is probably what Elvis was feeling that tension always knowing in the back of his mind as much as he was destroying it with his performance that there was the Colonel Tom Parker there watching or or manipulating something in the background you always felt that was always there throughout the entire movie yeah, like signing a, some sleazy deal or yeah, whatnot. Yeah, 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 exactly. Elvis yeah. is singing Suspicious Minds, you know, caught in a trap. And, you know, and the colonel, it's it's uh, a, a metaphor of what he was doing of locking Elvis into these this contract with the International, which became the Hilton in Las Vegas for up to his death, basically. Yeah, but because. Well, for one reason, he was uh, the colonel was a, a habitual gambler and he needed the money to, you know, so he had Elvis. Elvis was his jumping. What, what the chickens that dance when he was a carny, you know, Elvis became yeah. Elvis was that to the Colonel. Cause he didn't have creative there's, bone in his body. You know, there's one moment where you see him show some emotion in that film and i right. wanted to ask you guys if you remember this and we don't have to if we can put a pin in it for now and come back to it yeah like but i don't know if that was him playing a role to be perceived as, as yeah. being emotional and, and human or if he just had a moment of what he would perceive as weakness where he was human and he did feel a little bit of guilt and he did feel responsible for everything that was going on mm -hmm. you know the moment i'm talking about yeah, that was right. That was uh, that was one of the first uh, Vegas performances, wasn't it? When, yeah, when yeah. Elvis just, just killed it on stage for the first time. Yeah, yeah, with, yeah. yeah that was. Uh, I, I felt the same way. I wasn't sure if I was believing it or if it was it was a con as well. So yeah. That, yeah. and that again, that's the beauty of the character is that you don't know, you know. And he was, yeah, he, they made him more complex. And I, th I, it wasn't full on you know mustache twirler either mm -hmm. i mean you could still see i mean dude was a genius i mean even the thing with the, when yeah. they were doing the merchandise for the first time the yeah. i hate the i yeah. hate elvis yeah. buttons yeah. Yeah. i mean that's like you know primus sucks 30 years later or mm -hmm. whatever you know what i mean it was like it was it's like look someone's going to do these buttons so we're might as well be the ones that yeah. makes the money from it. i mean all that kind of stuff you know tom yeah. hanks called him a diabolical genius and every that's yeah. Fair. yeah yeah and uh, it had to be, even though he is a, the Colonel was a real person and not a character written for a fictional movie, it had to be just uh, a, a, to be an actor and want to play that role had to be just extremely enticing to Tom Hanks and probably the reason why, obviously why he took, took the part, you know? And to see, uh, to watch Tom Hanks talk about the Colonel and the Colonel and Elvis, it's just been, it's been fascinating. You can tell he did his homework as well. Yeah. Um, with, uh, you know, the, just the details, like, um, in every aspect of it. So, so yeah, that's, uh, and move, we, we kind of started into this, but the supporting cast I thought was great. I don't want to slide anybody, but I mean, Elvis and the Colonel are so, so much at the forefront. And I've already said that it was the, uh, Darcy, Darcy Montgomery, who played Steve Bender, who kind of stood out to me. I thought that part was really an amusing part of the film that how they just kept on doing what the hell they were going to, wanted to do with that special in 68. And the Colonel's going, you're going to wear this sweater and, you know, seeing here comes Santa Claus and, all, you know, and they just kept on and kept on. And, and uh, that was a really great part of, of the film. But what were your thoughts about everyone else who was made up the supporting cast? I thought, well, the, the one that took me a second to warm up to, but then as she continue on, uh, Olivia de Young, is that the way you pronounce the, the Priscilla? I, I believe. Yes. 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 So especially when she was a little girl, I mean, Priscilla is such a beautiful per I mean, she's so just, striking yeah so when she was a little girl before they had her on all the makeup you know when she was still over in germany i was like you know i was like i don't know if i'm you know seeing this feeling this chemistry yet but as you know 10 minutes into that role 
especially when she, you know, a few years later, how they kind of jumped ahead to like 66, 67 mm -hmm. when they got married and everything. She was brilliant and leading all the way up until the very final limousine scene at the end when she's trying to get Elvis to go into rehab. Yeah. Um, which which was a fact I never knew. Like I'm mm -hmm. surprised. I was Same. like, I was wondering, like, did, why didn't anybody? Wasn't anybody in his life like? Wouldn't they kind of? And it was nice to know that that was at least approached with him. You know, to to do that. Obviously, it's a shame it didn't happen. But um, so yeah, she she really, you know, in terms of the supporting cast, she was the one that really stuck out with me. As, as along with uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, is it Darcy Montgomery from from Stranger mm -hmm. Things? Like yeah. I'm, I'm gonna p piggyback off of what, what what you got. He's the one that I kept like going to and the reaction and the way that they did that whole. And I love how they made. You know, we talked about this on the last show too. Um, you know how the 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 sixty eight comeback special was so special to me in terms mm -hmm. of my Elvis fandom and how that was such a pinnacle point in the movie. You know, it really felt like that was the 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 big turning point in the the movie and uh, and that how they leaned so hard into that. I love that. Don't see a lot of um Elvis's mom in the film, but the actress who played her did a great job and you could yeah. you could feel her <laughs> just worry for Elvis, you know. It's almost like from reading and doing, and it, it, it's you kind of feel it in the movie. It's like the the other side of the pancake, or Elvis's fame was a two two edged sword for his mother. She never, it never. As soon as he became famous, it just never. It was so much of a change for her that she never got. It, it, it ended. I think it ended up leading to her death prematurely. You know, the, the worry yeah, for Elvis for sure. and 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 whatnot, and the change. Because I mean, the change in their in their lifestyle. So uh, I thought they were all great. I um, I, I thought that uh, Rich, Richard Roxborough, who played Vernon, really did a good job of coming yeah, off as this. Um, he was he was great. He was great. Uh, uh, he almost going along. You know, he had to worry about Elvis, but. You know, just went along with went along with the colonel. Uh, you know, the yeah. scene where they're shoving him into ice water. Yeah. You know, and the colonel says, uh, you know, the only thing that matters is this man is on stage tonight. And Elvis can, you know, and Vernon's like, uh, can, you know, Dr. Nick give him something, which is what they did. And it's just because he, he, it was more the colonel also playing in the Vernon sphere of, of becoming. Yeah going back to poverty again as well yeah and and or jail yeah yes yeah yeah, yeah. chris yeah uh, i was going to mention helen thompson like the she resembles her how they did the makeup with her mm -hmm. eyes and everything from every picture i've seen yeah. that was brutal you know and and i mean i just can't like i said i can't find a weak link in the cast i thought she was great i think it was a short role in the movie or a small role in the movie compared to the rest of the cast, but it, it was almost one, one of the more powerful. Like it led to everything was so hopeful up until the passing of his mother. Mm -hmm. And then from yes. then on, it was kind of a grief story. Yeah. And, and a, a, yeah. even with the highs, there was like um, a different tone and a different feeling. To, you know, it, he never got over that. And I feel like you felt that um, in the way it was portrayed in the movie. And his, his relationship with his mother borderline obsessive he was a, it was mm -hmm. a mama's boy you know the way they handled that in the film was great too you know um, butler was great you know the scene when he's in his mom's he, closet yeah yeah oh yeah. you know and um devastating yeah and austin butler and in his interviews had said that another thing that connected him with elvis is that he lost his mother when he was 23 as well mm. so he had he could play into it so that scene and knowing that having seen and heard Austin say that before then seeing that you know he tapped into his own grief for that for that uh yeah that scene in the and it was really and you almost wonder that point with the colonel did he did he really did he was was he sympathetic did he have any empathy for Elvis at that point because oh is it something you know, to capitalize on yeah exactly yeah yeah, that exactly. scene when he comes into the closet you're talking about when Colonel's standing there and Elvis is on the floor and he's looking over mm -hmm. him and 
Ah, uh, just the ten, yeah. I, I'll do everything your mother wants it done to make sure mm -hmm. you're safe. That kind right, of speech. Yeah. It's right. like, oh yeah. man, this is awful. Yeah. yeah, all the right words. Yeah, I yeah. also loved um, seeing the influences, the African American influences. Mm -hmm. Yes, of Elvis depicted, and of course there was a lot of create uh, creative liberty taken, um, but. You know, it, they really showed that Elvis, how much he loved that music and honored those. They were his heroes, you know. And genuinely yeah. grew up in that world. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. You know? He did. Uh, and Tupelo, after Vernon went to prison, for you know, uh, his mom and Elvis lived in uh, Shake Rag in Tupelo, uh, along with the, the, the poorest of the poor whites and and uh the black people of, of the city and that's when he went to black churches as a kid and 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 ran with that with that group of of friends and it introduced to that music it's just i like seeing bb king uh fats domino i mean little richard shows little up, richard is know? awesome yeah, so, uh, the yeah. little richard thing who played great. little richard do we know i i not offhand i don't but he kind of nailed he was it was Lil Richard. You Alton know. Mason. Yeah, that's him. Alton Mason. Yeah, he was incredible. Yeah. And um, I appreciate that. Wasn't, um, and another, I guess another character to bring up was Memphis and Las Vegas. Yeah, it's yeah. like yeah. Gotham, right? And they Compared filmed, to the Batman. Yeah. I, they filmed this in all in Australia, but I felt like you were in Memphis. Yeah, uh, yeah. I felt like you were at Graceland, you know, the, the, the detail. So they uh, didn't film any of that interior stuff at Graceland? Nothing. Wow. Wow. All, do, all done in Australia, the whole thing. Okay. I mean, they were, even this, you know, a lot of these biopics we've seen in the, are the television shows or whatever, they've, they've gone to Sun Records in Memphis and filmed in the studio. Yeah. Well, that they recreated Sun Records. You know, you see Elvis standing out in front of it. He's, He's in Sun Records when he signed his contract with RCA, and that's you know. And then all of Graceland was were, was was sets and okay. whatnot. It was just I thought it was they just really you know when he takes his car, he gets you know he gets pissed off at something. I forget exactly what got him. He took he drives off and down to Bill Street and hangs out oh, right. with BB King, and you yeah you're thinking okay that looks like. 50s bill streak to me you know so yeah i thought yeah. they did a great job it's a it's it's a beautiful film too just the yeah, cinematography yeah. and the aesthetics and, and whatnot and attention to detail i mean it, it was there any part part of the film when you went you know you know it's austin butler and you know it's actors and you know their own sets and, you, and you're just thinking my gosh this it looks exactly what i've seen on on archive footage or, or or read about or whatever before anything stand out to either one of y'all well speaking of this is not supporting cast in terms of actors but i mean mm -hmm. you know we keep talking about austin butler getting academy award the uh costume designer better mm -hmm. get academy award or at least nomination i mean the attention to detail even when they were doing the 68 special not not the white suit not the leather jumps up but even like uh the the musical numbers yeah i mean those were yeah. like in, in the six <clears throat> like even when he's kind of hanging out in that like 1963 64 cheesy movie period like mm -hmm. with the turtle turtlenecks and like i mean like it, it, that was like when butler was in that period I was like this that's freaking elvis right yeah there. i mean and like he looked some of those shots that was it was like oh my gosh we're looking at looking at elvis right here so yeah the costumes were just of not just elvis everybody you know priscilla yeah. too as well um and just incredible i mean just you know i mean uh baz you could tell that he was like you, you mentioned about attention to detail i mean they did not do like the the Hollywood 2022 version of mm -hmm. what Elvis looked like in 1963. It was like, no, this is what he looked like in 1963, you mm -hmm. know, straight up, you know? Yeah. Even down to, um, and it's funny because I've not seen some of these, uh, uh, like the documentary, that's the way it is. I've not seen that in a long, long time. Mm -hmm. Maybe since, uh, you know, childhood, but there are certain shots that stuck with me of fans' reactions 
to the to the show that oh, he's putting right, on. Right. And it's like, and you can't tell. So it's, it's woven so well where I think they've used a couple of shots that were actual archive footage. Yes. Yeah. Blending with people that look like those same people. Even the extras yeah. were playing r- roles of they were they were representing <laughs> yeah, exactly. real characters. Uh, right. You know, right, right, like, man, right. they, did, they they could have filled it with anybody, and no one would would you know mention it. Right. But the, and the sixty eight special, the girls around the stage when he's doing the solo portion yeah. in the jackets, yeah. like they they look like the people in the in the archive. But it's, it's so you can tell that Baz is a fan, and things like that mattered. You know, it it's, I don't know that you would have got that same attention to detail if and, Spielberg would have made this or whoever. You know, if yeah. it was just an, another great director that wasn't necessarily an Elvis fan. And I appreciate the little things like that that were woven I, into that. I wrote in the review that um, it's it was very you know it's probably the the baziest of Baz's films, mm-hmm. yeah. and and it's a it's not it's not Elvis's walk the line. You know what I mean? No, it's no, not not at all. It's not this linear story straight up biography and i that's one of the things that i you know i love about it and freak you brought it up at the beginning that how the way it starts and you got to get used to how how the film is going yeah, the to pay, roll the pay, you know the pacing is is it, again you have to like let go because the pacing is like frantic i guess you know but mm-hmm. once you get into that roller coaster like once you're on that roller coaster you're there you know it's just yeah. get when you first jump on that roller coaster it's like you know the the time jumps and all the the visual you know the bad visuals you know with the, the over you know the screen overlays all that kind of stuff um but when you're in it it's just amazing can we talk about i mean uh, you know one scene that the scene when he does the after the Steve Allen show, the concert mm-hmm. after yeah. the Steve Allen show. Yeah. Those visuals. That was powerful. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. When he's like, you know, as a musician, seeing that too as well. It's like, you know, everybody's always telling you, like, you should be like this. I mean, all of us get that. You know, Chris, I'm sure you get that too. You know, like if you just did this in your career, you do this in your career. You know, we've all heard different versions of that as a performer. And when he's like, goes internally and he's like this is what i have to do and this is who i am and 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 what they have to physically pull him off of stage because he's so in the zone like he's like michael jordan Mm -hmm. game seven of you know bulls versus utah you know what i mean that's that's the zone he's in and they he's on the stage and and he's still shaking as they're pulling him off the stage because he's like in that zone that was just such an incredible scene did this brings up that scene because I thought it was great. Did it? It didn't bother me at all. There are some amalgamations. There's the, there's combined events of Elvis's life that are turned into one thing. Uh, some things are are not in exact chronological order. Sure. For example, um, they use the the finger, the pinky. You know, don't you move your pinky? That was actually, that was like TV spot. That was like fifty six Jacksonville when he Jacksonville, Florida, where he was told by the police not not to do it. And so they combined that with you know the reaction to the Steve Allen show where they made him sing in front of a in a tuxedo with with a real hound dog, and all the the negative um, publicity. You know, uh, you know he's a juvenile delinquent, and you know all this negative stuff that because he broke such barriers then so they take that and they they film this very powerful scene of him picking trouble which you know it's 56 he didn't sing trouble till king creole uh, 1958 yeah. and i don't yeah, know if right. he ever saw sang trouble in concert other than I and mean, if you want to count the 68 special but that was on a sound stage so right. it doesn't bother me that things like that or him having graceland in 1956 where he didn't buy till 1957 those little things didn't affect me did did, were y'all fine with the creative liberties of the narrative but uh i I noticed the trouble uh performance but i i thought it was a great choice because it represented everything that was going on in that moment and how that crowd felt when he went against the rules and wasn't the new elvis he was the rebel elvis that's what it was more like it was a metaphor for, Mm -hmm. for what happened more rather than you know uh it didn't matter about the song it, it i don't think it contradicted the story 
No. I think it just embellished it maybe and I, added to the, to the th- film. Exactly. I think it enhanced the story they were telling yeah. um, for creative and creative purposes and for, like you said, as a metaphor for what Elvis was, go- what he was feeling, what was going on in his life at that point. Yeah. Yeah, I agree totally. I mean, you know, it, it's kind of in our last conversation when we talked a little bit about the movie the thing with the electric guitars they did at the uh, on one of his before, uh, Louis is it Louisiana Hayride right is mm-hmm. that the, the first one where they brought that you know obviously there weren't distorted electric guitars really yeah. happening at the time but the same thing it's like you felt what those kids were feeling compared to what today's emotion so I, I thought it was genius yeah and that's another scene that they present it in the film because you can't you just can't do everything like it you know you can't have it all. But they take that like it's Elvis's first concert appearance. Right. Yeah. Where he he was actually on stage in July of 1954 in Memphis over into Park Shell right after That's All Right and Blue Moon of Kentucky was released. And he wasn't on Louisiana Hayride until a few months later. So, so they use that. But, I, but you had to get Louisiana Hayride in there. You yeah. had to get Elvis's first appearance on the stage. Yeah. So they kind of com- they combine it. And you'll get an air, uh, Elvis purist. And I consider myself an Elvis purist, but there'll be some like Elvis didn't play the, you know, his, it was at Open Park Shell in July of 1954. I, I, you know, this is not accurate, but you got to let that stuff go, right? You it's know? a story it's, mechanic that helped that, the pacing yeah. of the film. Uh, and it didn't take away from what actually happened. It's just like you're saying, they're rolling a couple of stories and so on to make the pacing uh, flow with the film. I think that's, you know, didn't bother me any. No, I want to, okay, that leads right into, let's get, Austin Butler. Austin Butler's Elvis. Um, he absolutely nailed El- Elvis's voice. His voice says, he even talked yeah. about that. There was like, Elvis had like three different voices. You know, there was the, you know, the young Elvis who just starting out in the 50s and then it changed in the 60s. And then by the 70s, it was this. Um, he was talking about that on Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Fallon's show, Tonight Show. And Fallon had him do each one. And he, you know, explained how, explained how he came up with each one. It was just fantastic. His mannerisms, but his, he's not doing an impression of Elvis. That is the key thing. He's just almost, he's just like uh, channeling Elvis in a way. He was Elvis. And I never, his performance was great. So y'all, please talk about Austin I, so Elvis. I, I know he's been cast in Dune 2. Yeah. Listen, Austin Butler's not in Dune 2. Elvis is. Yeah. Because I don't know how he's... I'm, I'm going to unsee him now. Yeah. After how brilliant... He, I mean, I'm sure he'll be great. And, I, you know, he's just going to be like another yeah. Christian Bale where he can morph into whatever he wants to be. But he... And out of the three of us, I believe I was the one that had the, the you know, the reaction to seeing him in the first trailer. Mm-hmm. And it being a little bit jarring for me. But that, like, um, from scene one... In that film, he was Elvis Presley. And that's never been the case with previous films or TV series or whatever. It's always been an actor doing his best, you know, and we have to have that leap. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's phenomenal. Yeah, sure, I mean, we're all talking about the Oscar buzz already as fans, but I mean, I, there's no way he's not going to be considered at least. With uh, that th- there's performance. just no way. That's just, that is a top notch acting performance and like you said but he's playing three roles yeah right right yeah it's almost like the clark kent superman thing you know mm-hmm. christopher, yeah. Re- christopher reeve clark kent superman thing because yeah. they're such almost totally different characters from each from each period and the way he's seen like ages so i know makeup's part of it i get it but it's he never it'd be so easy especially when you get into the 70s period to start going into caricature mode mm-hmm. and he never you never feel that way and it feels so seamless between each era you know i mean and totally believable that he's he's 20 21 years old totally believable that he's 35 years old and totally believable that he's 42 that that ending scene oh i don't know if we want to jump yeah, there go ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh my gosh i you know of course i kept wondering and i think we even brought it up on the last show if they were going to uh uh you know show the um uh gosh why am i blanking on the song right now with Unchained the piano. Melody. Unchained melody. Unchained melody. yeah 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 and the way that they you know when you first see him as the very very overweight 
unhealthy Elvis sitting at the piano doing that with Charlie Hodge and the whole nine mm -hmm. yards and the way that they seg it into the real Elvis. Yes. That was, I, my I, heart dropped when I saw I, that. I, I'm not going to BS y'all. I, I lost it at that, at that, that moment. I yeah. lost it as a fan. I, I mean, right now I think about it. That scene yeah. to see Elvis sing that song at that concert uh two months before he died right um it always it always gets me because i mean he like like charlie hodge you see elvis in you know charlie hodge is holding the mic and there's you wonder at some point you know is he going to get through it and his voice yeah. is so great his voice is so great and it hadn't always been in some of those last concerts, you know? Yeah. And he, yeah. he looks at Charlie Hodge and gives him, I got this look. Yeah. And you yeah. could tell he was, and he was proud of that performance and to yeah. morph it into the real Elvis. I was like, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm done. You know, it was, that was brilliant. And I was, and I love the fact that they, you know, acknowledged the, you know, the real Elvis, you know they what I mean? Did. It wasn't like they just didn't, it wasn't just going to be Austin Butler and you just, yeah. Mem memories of what Elvis was, even not just that that scene, but as they went through the little, you know, timelines in the, the fifties. Yeah, yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. It was great. And there was, you know, continued on and talked a little bit about Elvis's life, and you see, right with his uh, speech, with his speech about you know, uh, getting up and write a song yeah. each day. Yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, it was. Uh, it, it was really well done. That was a great tribute to Elvis, and uh, I. When I talk about spoilers, and yes, I mean, I was on this Facebook Elvis group, and I was like, someone, one, one of the ministry, uh, admins said, don't post spoilers if you've seen the film. And, you know, some smart ass goes like, well, we know how the story ends. We know the story. And I'm like, I've seen the movie, right? There is one scene in particular. Yeah. You don't yeah. want to know anything about going yeah. into that film. Right. Because right. that was, I didn't, I didn't see that coming. At yeah. all, and I thought the I thought the planes. You know, when he gets on the plane, mm -hmm. you know, at the end, I thought that was it. You know, I, yeah. I was gonna we were gonna see credits right after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it and was I, just fantastic. Yeah, go ahead, Chris. Would you have been okay if it was? Because I, you know, I was in that moment thinking, man, are they are they gonna? Because I felt like this the seventy nine TV movie kind of did that where it ends on a high and he still looks yeah. great, and it's like, oh, you know, dude, we're just gonna. Hint that the rest happened with some text at the end credit or something like that. And then it still would have been a great movie if, if yeah. it had gone that right. route, let's be honest. Right. But the fact that they went beyond and showed it, oh, that, it I was really... floored. Oh, man. Like, but yeah, that, the segue scene, the whole, that was just yeah. powerful. It was. It was really props to Baz Luhrmann yeah. for, for doing that. I'm glad really. you didn't tell us about that going in, Bill. No, I, I knew that for every Elvis fan that – that was that you got to see that fresh you got to yeah. you know yeah. um real quick and we'll start segueing and finishing this up the the performances of butler as El, okay elvis on stage the musical stuff him singing any any standout moments you'd like the best or because you know there's My a few different ones so Mine actually was the scene where he was uh, writing the new intro with the whole band mm -hmm. when he was going through all the. I was going to ask y'all about that. Yeah, oh, I love that. That was brilliant. You know, the, with the new version of "That's All Right, Mama," basically yeah. for yeah, and and the, you know, going to the horns and go up an octave and and the drums and I mean, literally going to each instrument and mm -hmm. literally arranging it. Obviously, it was reminiscent of "That's the Way It Is," kind mm -hmm. of the, the, those yes. behind the scenes shots, yeah. but that was that was brilliant the way they did that that was one of my even that he wasn't singing so much in that part that was one of my favorite musical sequences. i wanted to add i was gonna i thought about y'all when i when i saw that part because we kind of touched on that um on the last show about how elvis was more than just the singer he yeah produced and he you know directed yeah. and and whatnot and I, th I thought it was great he's like all right horns come on in bah, 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 you know and they're you know and yeah. they're following his lead chris any yeah. your favorite Elvis performance, but oh, yeah, the, the, I'd say uh, vocally, Heartbreak Hotel, because mm -hmm. 
I forgot that that was him in that. And, and you know, there's been there's certain points where uh, uh, you, you can tell they've woven the real Elvis in, in, vocally in, in the later yeah. stuff. But, I, you know, he is so on vocally when he's singing the, the 50s yeah. Elvis, 60s Elvis. It's, it's incredible. Um, and then the Vegas era, not vocally, obviously, that was that was all that was uh, Elvis. Elvis yeah. but his movements, I'm like, did they just use stock footage for some of the dancing and film from, you know, the shots from behind? And it, it's not, it's it. It's yeah. like the work he must have done to get those moves down to look that effortless and natural. It's, uh, it's just incredible. Um, you know, he, the, the, yeah, the, he, but Austin said that Elvis was never choreographed. He just moved yeah. where, how he felt with the music, right? And so you had to take Elvis being unchoreographed and then choreograph, choreograph it and it. learn it. And he said it was just, he said, but I tried to get in the mode or I'm just, you know, I was just, I felt, felt it. So the, the yeah. shot when he's doing the kind of rage hands yeah, yeah in, in the Vegas yeah, yeah. thing and he's just, yeah. his hair's going everywhere. I'm like, I remember that shot, you yeah. know, there's just moments that they must have picked out, obviously the study and, and work on, but it's so believable. And I didn't blink an eye. I knowing that was Elvis. I mean, that's actually Elvis in Vegas in concert, probably from that's the way it is. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, when he's singing, uh, especially, uh, you know, Suspicious Minds on stage, it, I didn't blink an eye that it was Austin lip singing at that point. Yeah. Because usually you can tell, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, this one, it just felt like he was doing it. I, I, I love the Louisiana Hayride part because I'm a huge fan of that, that era of Elvis, the, the Sun Record stuff. And him coming out nervous, and he starts with you know, baby, let's play house, and he's just a and just real slow, and he's and he you know like get a haircut, buttercup, and he's like what you know, and goes start and his what are they hollering at you know, and uh, he comes out they want those girls want to see you wiggle, go boy, and he goes out and does more, and it's just and he nails that fifties Elvis on yeah. stage, man, and yeah, it was yeah, just yeah. great. He did that on was it, was it uh, Jimmy Fallon? I well, he, did, he did the shuffle walk, the shuffle, yeah, the thing, yeah. and it's like man. Yeah, uh, just a note too, like I kept watching my wife's reaction because I mean, she's not an Elvis fan. She puts up with me being an Elvis fan. You yeah. know, uh, I'm yeah, not yeah, saying yeah. she doesn't appreciate yeah. him. Yeah. yeah. Right. But some of those early 50s scenes, watching her react to like when they would do the, uh, this like black and white kind of where, where the FBI is filming under the stage trying to yeah. get uh, yeah. a report on him and on how perverted he is. And it was just so well done. But like her reaction to that was just giggly and kind of uh, not not fangirly, but I've not seen her react like that to Elvis before. So it's funny that like Austin is bringing that youth back to this character, you know, back yeah. to this uh, not a character, he's a real person. But it's I wonder if that will have a domino effect on today's uh, movie going audience, where it, it kind of draws people into who he was and the music a little bit more, and and brings. A lot more relevance to him. Like, I wonder if obviously Graceland ticket sales are going to go through the roof after this movie comes out. I, I just chipped in. So yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I, I uh, think real so. quick, Pokes, Poke Solid Annie, too. That was really, yeah. really cool. That, that, that they did. That's what always been one of my favorite kind of more semi deep cuts of his. And yeah. I'm glad they brought that into the movie. Yeah. Um, a couple of moments, too. Yeah. That were, um, go ahead. Uh, Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. and the kennedy assassination yeah, yeah how they handled those moments um i mean spoilers but there'd just be a gunshot that you thought was in that moment somebody had fired a gun on set or what mm -hmm. and it just kind of stopped elvis's world both times you know yeah uh, the if i can dream moment on the on the 68 special how that came about and how that was his first stance to make a uh, you know a, a, his first political statement publicly as an yeah. artist you know there's things about that that I didn't know. And mm -hmm. I, I think they, they, they the colonel, did a great yeah. job of explaining how that came about. The colonel drilled into him that if he was ever asked about things like that, he'd say, I, I'm just an entertainer, you know? Yeah, and I've heard um, him say that. Yes, and Elvis probably felt, and that's part of the Parker dynamic, he felt trapped that he couldn't, when you had all this in the 60s, especially that time, you know, the late 60s, protest music bob dylan all that yeah. stuff you know elvis certainly wanted to be part of that and that was his only way to do it and it brings me back the fact that they actually built christmas sets 
they didn't even use for that just to appease the colonel it was great um yeah, that, that that pivot from the christmas set yeah when the camera does a 180 to the elvis lights behind him and and you know yeah. parker just kept okay ready for here comes santa claus you know just over yeah. and over yeah, and they yeah. were just rolling their eyes um is there real quick i got we'll, we'll i've kept you long enough fate is there a your one favorite scene just one scene that really stands out I, i'll it, you know i it's got to be the the unchained melody morphing from El, from austin as elvis to the real elvis and so it was so powerful but anything other than that anything that you really loved it's just as a moment snapshot in that film the, the you know we talked about it earlier but when he was dragged off of stage for uh defying yeah. everybody law enforcement his own mm -hmm. manager everybody that was giving him advice from the family um how how they shot that film that and how energetic and crazy he behaved on stage that that defined him in that moment yeah you know that that was peak elvis to me uh, and that was one of my favorite scenes obviously like the unchained melody at the end that's the most hard hitting of the whole film yeah. especially if you're a fan but even if you're not like it's just so emotional even if you're not a fan at that part or that point in the film you're absolutely invested in elvis yeah. as a human being as, yeah. a, as the that character the main character in the film at that point you know even if he was just a fictional character even if this was yeah. all just fiction it's a great story yeah tragedy but like it's, it's a great story with the complex characters that you, you'd struggle to write people like this mm -hmm. you know like the colonel i wonder how many managers in 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 uh you know uh music movies have been based on the character of tom parker yeah sure how many villains sure. in 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 fiction in general you know uh, sure so I mean, yeah, like you said, I, I bet Tom Hanks was thrilled to dive into that. Sure, Freak, Any other any snapshot yeah. moment or anything, or just too much? I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes, exactly. But I mean, a cosine on both you guys. I mean, Unchained Melody, obviously, probably number one, and and then number two. What Chris brought up that I, I talked about earlier about the uh, the scene in in the fifties there too as well. I mean, there really are no really weak points when i i'm going through it mentally in my head i'm like thinking there was no weak scenes in the movie maybe the maybe i guess again i brought it up earlier but the other scene uh the musical moment with him doing the arranging with the band i thought that was just he just felt so much in his element right there and felt yeah. so happy like so much of it the movie is kind of tragic mm -hmm. um because of his relationship with colonel tom parker and even like what everything's happening to him and it the that scene to me besides just showing how talented of a musician not just singer that he was but just seeing how happy he was it was it was like the excite you know we all yeah. feel like that as a musician when we're working with yeah. other musicians and you're geeking out that they're feeling what you're feeling and you could not feel that in him that he was he was you know this this is where i want to be and this is uh you know who i am too as well i thought it was a really really quick also uh Parker when he was kind of talking about the whole Priscilla and his marriage falling apart great observation about you know there's the love that he gets from the people there's no way she's ever going to be able to match that you know mm. that, yeah. that, that that love he feels on the stage and the way that they did the thing with him kissing all the girls not in a like you know in a in a sexualized way mm -hmm. just like in terms of like these are you know these th this one's my wife this one's my wife not wife in terms of like you know again like relationship but like w wife to the stage i guess you know what i mean yeah yeah yeah, yeah. there's um, one thing i wanted yeah. to bounce off of you guys sure right so as a fan mm -hmm. there's there's very little footage or or documentation of elvis existing outside of vegas and memphis being a human being right mm -hmm. and i wondered if they would explore that a little bit um where he was just you know walking the streets of la with security or whatever and he's so confined when he's in vegas you only ever see him on stage or in the hotel room when he's in memphis mm -hmm. he's either uh recording or he's at graceland mm -hmm. it's like they even in the movie baz kind of chose to imprison him in these two little camps that he spent his career it's in. clear clearly it, it represented the world that elvis isolation lived lived in starting in 1956 yeah i mean it's hard to imagine 
He created his own world. From, you know? Besides from the, when he visits B.B. King, that's the uh -huh. only human, not performer Elvis thing. That, you know, that's, that's a moment. And it kind of stands out because of that. Like, there was never really a moment other than that uh, club hang where he was just being a human being off stage, hanging out with friends. Sure. Well, I read I read that um, they went. Well, I think that the 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 sixty eight special was filmed in was it filmed in New York? I think it was filmed in New York. I'm pretty sure. Was, or at least when they had the meet, they might have had the meetings about it in New York with the producers because I remember the um, uh, what the producers of that were talking about. Elvis went to New York City for the first time and he walked out in the street and he it was freaking him out because no one was paying attention to him. He was just walking around in the street mm -hmm. and he didn't even know, like, felt, he felt like an alien, they said, because he didn't know, he wasn't used to just walking on the street with people around, you know? Yeah. I, it was... Um, I think it was I, LA. Yeah. The, the actual 68 special? Yeah. That was at Burbank. Burbank in, uh, okay. Okay, yeah. well, maybe it was, maybe it was California. Maybe it was Hollywood. It was thinking, yeah, but he still... He walked out with Steve Bender right that's what it was yeah on, he, sun, he on sunset that's right Boulevard. that's what it was i was thinking new york but yeah and right, no yeah. and no one recognized him right and it just right. it was like this is where he was at that point in his career yeah yeah and that and that represents that whole scene you know he's behind the hollywood right, sign, right. you know in the movie right. uh, probably not and it didn't happen that way but it was uh you know i need to get back to being who i really am you know and they, they did that for elvis Hey, God, that that yeah. that sixty eight special is so. It's 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 so heartbreaking as a fan of what he could have done after that. You know, he could have been he could have went back into a American uh, recording studio in Memphis and worked with Chip's moment again after he did the you know uh, uh, from Elvis in Memphis album, and he could have. It, what ifs you know if ifs and buts are candy and nuts we'd well that was have you know, a merry christmas yeah you remember, you remember on our last show we yeah. were talking about we wish that he would have uh met met a rick rubin type yeah you know that yeah. that was even that it was a sped up timeline and he was a lot mm -hmm. younger than johnny cash was that was definitely his rick rubin moment you yeah know, the exactly special you know exactly all right um oh one thing i wanted to bring up to y'all baz lerman says he has a four-hour cut of the film that he knows he knows that, you know, he, I was trying to explain to people that the movie you're getting, that is that the Baz Luhrmann cut. He's the director. He cut the film. He knows that he's not going to put a four hour movie on the big screen. Yeah. yeah right. Uh, they film and it's, you got to use, you film what you film and then you got to create the story and some things got, you know, some things have to go. I'd love to see an ex the extended cut at some po point. I don't, uh, I don't, you know, they'll, they'll release the home video. It'll be the movie we see in the theater this year. But at some point, I'd love to see the extended cut. He said they filmed the, the Nixon visit. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. And they, but they cut that. He said there was some of the more wacky stuff that Elvis did, you know. Um, uh, there was more of his relationship with uh, Sam Phillips and mm -hmm. with Dixie Locke, his first real girlfriend. Yeah, that didn't make it to the final cut, and uh, yeah, I mean that's another what another hour and a half. I I definitely would see it. I'm almost thinking that would be something they would save for. I know it, I know it's five years from now, but on the the 50th anniversary of Elvis's passing, that I could definitely see Warner Brothers kicking that out at at that point. But I, I I'm down for it. 100%, you know. I, I thought when you know the whole gun scene in the in the log the, the I thought we that's I'm guessing that's around where the Nixon thing might have originally mm -hmm. happened. It looked about that when I saw the gun mm -hmm. thing, that's the first thing that popped in my head is that shot with him posing with Nixon. So I was, I bet it was right around Probably, originally. Yeah. It was it was around in that 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 era. Yeah. Yeah. So that yeah. Chris, 4 hour cut, would you you I think I'd text my you on that, and yeah. I, I, my response was stick it in my veins. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, I can understand why some of those scenes, maybe they didn't help the pacing of the overall cut that's already yeah. what, two, two hours and 39 minutes. So it's mm -hmm. a long watch. If, yeah. But those will mean something to fans. And if there's an extra, you know, if there's a Blu ray version that's the bonus, yeah. people like us are going to buy it, and, and I'll enjoy every minute of it. So yeah, sign me up. Can I ask y'all one more question? The. The soundtrack, how it played throughout the film. What were y'all thoughts on that? I thought it was great. 
thought it was great. All the, 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 you know, the artists they brought in to cover Elvis, to mix, to do remixes, to, uh, and brand new songs. You know, I, I've had that Doja Cat Vegas song stuck, stuck yeah. in my mind, in my head over the last week. I thought it was, and, uh, I'm, I'm so ready for them to release it. Cause I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to play the heck out of that, that soundtrack. And it brings up what Chris kind of brought, talked about earlier about, how this will will this will this music this soundtrack help introduce Elvis to a new generation? Thoughts? It was so I was expecting remixes of Elvis songs, you know, but mm -hmm. they were actually like almost like the samples of Elvis songs that turned yes. into whole new material, you yes. know, the songs themselves. So I'm excited by that, like the, the Eminem uh, track. I hadn't heard it going into that. I, I tried to kind of steer away and just go in. Uh, without spoiling too much of the material, you know, but everything is so thoughtfully placed with with the with, with the score as well, you know, it's, it's brilliant. But mm -hmm. yeah, I wonder if this will just kind of reinvigorate the, the original catalog, as well as sure. um, you know, this the soundtrack kind of stands by itself as a modern piece of music, I guess, mm -hmm. from what I've heard so far. Um, I wonder if like there was a bit of a remix of uh, Suspicious Minds at, at the end of the credits, if you stuck around for that, yeah. I texted yeah. Bill, I was like, is there an end credits? Like I was waiting for Elvis 2 or something to pop right. up. Like, <laughs> right, right. Elvis will exactly. return in. Yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah, um, it's worth sticking around just for the soundtrack snippets in the credits. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. I was really, I, yeah, I'm looking forward to listening to it in its entirety. I, I like the Tupelo Shuffle where they uh, sample, it's Austin, but that's all right. You know, singing that's all yeah. right. And then they, oh, right. you know, to original song. So I, all in all, I'm it's Elvis fan. I am extremely happy with this movie. And I think it's, I think it's a film as a biopic. I think it's the definitive Elvis biopic movie. And you pair that with uh, the searcher and Peter Goralnik's two books. That's probably, that's pretty, pretty solid Elvis material. If you want to indoctrinate yourself into Elvis. Do you have any predictions, uh, Bill um, or and Chris? I mean, is this going to be a hit hit, you think? Or is this going to be, I mean, big, big box office, you think? Because, I mean, judging just from at least my showing, and Chris, you said yours was similar. I mean, it was like I said, it was packed. Y'all telling me that the that the screenings were that packed last night, That's that says a lot, you know? And I've seen some of the, uh, you know, you've seen these videos where they've had these screenings throughout the US <clears throat> other than last night and <clears throat> Baz and Austin show up at it, you know, whether it be Seattle or wherever. I mean, I've seen different, different places that they've showed up and it's like, it's no one of my vintage, you know, it's a lot. I, I'll, I'll say kids, I mean, 20 and 30 year olds that are, that are in making up the audience, you know, there um, were a mix last night because I was paying attention to that. Is this? Am I going to be the youngest guy in the room here? You yeah. Know, my wife and I. There are obviously there were people that probably don't normally go to movies that were in their you know late sixties and beyond because it was mm -hmm. a, an Elvis movie. Sure. But yeah. the amount of hipster kids in <laughs> yeah. their twenties yeah. in Nashville that went to that film all dolled up collecting their poster, I couldn't believe it. So I don't know if that's a sign of, um, it, you know, it's, it, maybe it won't be uh, Avengers numbers. And I, 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 I mean, I, I just assumed when they made this film or that when they announced it, it would be straight to streaming, that there wouldn't be an audience to even have a mm -hmm. theatrical release. So the fact that it's already doing that kind of, it's getting like this kind of buzz. Um, everyone's talking about the performances like they're Oscar worthy. I think this might surprise us. I think it's going to do better than the, you know, it's not going to be a billion dollar movie like, uh, yeah, a, a superhero flick. Although it's 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 kind of sort of a superhero Almost movie is. in a way. Yeah, you know? right, right. right. Um, but I think it's going to do better. And I know, like, I just checked my local theater. I want to. I just was curious. Uh, this, where I would have went to see it last night. I checked the on Fandango, the ticket sales, and I checked it like at five o'clock yesterday afternoon, and it was that that screening was sold out. So yeah, who would have thought? I thought it, I thought they would be diehard Elvis fans would go at these fan screenings, but it sounds like, I mean, my my son, my youngest son is twenty one, or almost he'd be twenty one next month, uh, and his girlfriend, 
I mean, they're all excited to go see it and they're not, you know, even though he grew up with me, you know, he's not, he's not a huge Elvis fan. So. Austin Butler's almost kind of garnered uh, that same kind of attention that Elvis got from the female demographic too. Like if you watch the, 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 I think he showed up in LA to the screening and the the fan reaction to him walking into the theater was unbelievable. He's well, I think that's definitely helping. Yeah. 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 And he's uh, seems to be very, Humble, nice, yeah, young man, and yeah. Did you, did y'all see his uh, interview? He did with uh, well, it'd be an interview together, but it's him and Lisa Marie. It was on that 2020 special from last night, and she's like, and there's clips of it online, and she's like, she raves over his performance, yeah, and says no, no, no one has got it right until him and he was, he was my dad in this mm-hmm. in this movie and she's she's just almost like falling over him like a sibling or like a, a child and she's like i'm so protective of him now you know this one i just and it's just all the presley family is and uh priscilla have raved over it and and they were skeptical you know going sure. in so i yeah the answer you take a wrong way around the answer and i think it's going to do better than in the early box office. I think I think it being moved to June because of the COVID and all that, I yeah. think it's really going to help it out, you know? It's, yeah. This is a prime yeah. spot, you know? Do we want to make box office predictions? Are we going to be that bold? Worldwide or just... or the, the Worldwide. Method? Worldwide. I'll go with... Give me... Three, 375 million worldwide. Okay. How about you, Freak? I'm being, yeah, my, I'd, yeah. I'd, yeah, that sounds kind of what I was thinking. I mean, it, I think there's the possibility it could go up to 450 or five. Yeah. I think there, that's possible. If the, the word of mouth is as strong, I know we're Elvis fans, I get yeah. it. But just judging even off of, I'm sure you guys saw some of the Twitter buzz, you know, and mm-hmm. these, not everybody was Elvis fans that were talking about this movie on Twitter, at least the ones that I saw. They were just movie fans. Mm-hmm. And, it seemed pretty strong and it, obviously it all led all uh roads led back to austin butler they, they you know so i think the buzz of him alone in this any misgivings anybody has you know m- m- that might not like uh baz is uh you know direction style or whatever i think that'll be with with austin's performance that's gonna everybody's gonna want to see this guy's performance i think i think it's gonna be that that type of thing i don't know what i don't know what the equivalent of like say walk the line was you know i know obviously the numbers are different because the Mm -hmm. economy was different 10 years ago or whenever that came out but um you know i would say whatever that was i would say it's gonna at least do that i would guess you know because elvis was i mean elvis was more of a pop cultural figure than johnny cash was you know yeah, so, sure. um, so you would think it would at least do those type of numbers, you know? Sure. And they'll look three seventy five. Warner Brothers will have a conga line going around. Oh, Burbank. will they? They'll be happy. Oh, oh okay. yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. They'll be making oh, yeah. Elvis to resurrect yeah. him for that. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, yeah. hey, if it does half, it does a half billion worldwide? I think it'll do five hundred. Okay. I think the international market is going to surprise on this one because yeah. it, uh, in Europe, he was massive. I think that. Um, I mean, who knows? I mean, this is just layman's mm-hmm. guesses, you know, but I wouldn't be surprised after how that theater felt, felt last night. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been to DC movies that were fan screenings that weren't as energetic. Yeah. Yeah. I, I went to I went to the fan screening it and it's a Shazam, you know, it wasn't mm-hmm. Superman yeah. or Batman or anything, but it was like bare, you know, half that amount of people mm-hmm. and, the, and the energy was different in the room and everything, you know? So, yeah. yeah. And that's a DC movie, obviously. So, yeah. Well... I think that's all I got. Love that movie. Look, I loved it. And I'm looking forward to seeing it again. I'm going uh, Friday, opening day, oh. the official opening day. I'm going to go with like a 2.30, taking nice. my son and my wife and his girlfriend. So, and my other son who lives in Maryland, he's in the Air Force. He's going to see it. My daughter lives in New Mexico. She's going to go see it. So uh, I'm going to do my part at the box office. I'll chip in couple bucks you know i'll help try to help it out get to the do it real quick real quick guys yeah. is, is is it a uh i should know this is it was it warner brothers paramount like what streaming services is probably going to end up it's on be it? HBO, HBO, max. Max. hbo max hbo max oh 
Yeah. Maybe that's where we get the four hour cut is the max release. It'll yeah. It'll uh I mean forty five days. So yeah. what's that? September, end of August, yeah. something yeah. like that. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. Right. All right, guys. Plug uh whatever you would like, please. Freak, go ahead. Uh, like I said on the last one, you can find me on Twitch nowadays, twitch.tv slash freakbase. We're getting ready to go on and starting to go out and tour again. We're going to be out in Colorado, out in New Mexico, East Coast, some New York, New Jersey dates. So you can find that all at just uh, freakbase.com, F R E E K B A S S dot com. Chris? You can find me on the socials at Chris Roach Mate for uh, tour pictures, dog pictures, and the occasional gym picture nobody cares about. Nothing to plug except this movie, though. All right. Yes. I am plugging me going to Memphis next week. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I was just, I had to go. So I'm going to, I'm staying at the guest house at Graceland, which is next door. I saw uh, that. That's going, new, right? It is relatively new. Yeah. And then yeah, yeah. across the street, they, I, I haven't been in 20 years. And now they have, they, they had some stuff across the street the last time I went. But now they got a whole, this huge complex called Elvis Presley's Memphis. And they've actually moved some of the stuff you used to see on the tour, the Graceland tour, over there. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the costumes and the suits and the clothing and things like that, and uh, more of the memor uh, memorabilia type things. And I mean, it's, it's tourist attraction. Yeah. Uh, and let's call it what it is. But I'm going to go, you know, take the Graceland tour, going to Sun Records, going down Bill Street. And uh, if you super make it to excited. Nashville, give me a shout, Bill. We'll Absolutely. A Absolutely. You know, they, uh, that's where uh, Austin, I, I, I could talk about this forever. Austin talked about, you know, all his vocals he recorded at RCA in Nashville where Elvis yeah, cut the B I don't studio, know man. how many songs he cut there yeah. in, in his day. So he goes, that was kind of surreal. So, wow. all right, guys, thanks for coming on. And uh, if you're out there, thanks for listening. Go see Elvis. Go see it. Yes. Elvis fan or not, you're going to love it. I think you'll have a new appreciation uh, for Elvis and what he, what he contributed to culture, not only American culture. I mean, he was a worldwide phenomenon, Elvis, you know? Yeah. And uh, that's, they did him right on this one. So with that, we'll catch you next time. You've been listening to the Batman on Film Satellite Show, BOF's non-Batman pop culture podcast. Follow the show on Twitter, at BOF Show. Follow BOF on Twitter, at The Batman on Film. For all of Team BOF, I'm announcer Rachel. Authoritative, definitive, the original Batman on film, established in 1998.